interests that you can, by incorporation, then to some degree secure the interest of external capital. But, 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 but nonetheless, the, 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 it, it, as matters presently stand, it would not be, as I understand it, legal to tie the reward to external capital holders in that scenario to the performance of the firm. They would have to be, it would have to be a fixed reward, as if almost in some ways it was simply the money that you had borrowed, as all, most firms do, from their bank for, to, to, to manage their day-to-day -day, um, affairs. It's, forgive me, but is that such a disaster? Why should those who simply provide money actually reap any other reward? You, you could argue from an entrepreneurial point of view that if someone is, is, is launching upon a new business venture, then there is an element of risk in it for them, and risk should bring with it a, a proportionate or disproportionate reward. Yes. I think it's also the case that, that uh, because um, the solicitor's <coughs> profession is regulated at the moment uh, under the 1980 Act uh, and there are some restrictions in that Act, uh, that's one of the reasons why legislation is necessary for uh, ABSs is to, to uh, um, deal with those restrictions in the Solicitor's Act, which are all detailed in Section 90, including allowing um, the, uh, the licence providers into the, the, the reserved areas. Could I, could I play devil's advocate on this and suggest that the reality in Scotland, which I think we acknowledge is a relatively small place compared with the models that have been talked about elsewhere, the reality is that if, even if this happens, there will probably never be more than two regulators, one of which is effectively yourselves as the Law Society and the other is effectively the institution of chartered accountants. Could we not achieve all the benefits that we hope to accrue from this legislation by making relatively small changes to your regulations and ICAS's regulations and be done with it? In, in some ways, we, for our interests, the honest answer to that would be yes. I don't, if you're being devil's advocate, I suppose I should be devil's advocate on behalf of the consumer lobby, which would say that that was the Scottish Parliament effectively delegating monopoly regulation powers to two as they would put it, randomly chosen organisations, and, 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 and there was an artificial restriction in other people entering the market. In terms of, of market intelligence, we agree, as, 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 as presently, to the best of our knowledge, the only other seriously interested player at the moment is ICATS. And it's interesting that in England, where there is this allowance for a multiplicity of regulators under a super regulator, the SRA is the only player, you know, two years after the Legal Services Act came into power. Yeah, I, I think that is consistent with my observation of the real world and, and we actually occupy the real world and, and whilst we've listened to people giving us a, uh, dare I say it, rehashed O-level economics as to why things should happen, I don't see any evidence that they're going to and if we're all in the same place I do wonder whether this is actually a route we need to go down but that's for another day perhaps. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, can we now turn to the fairly vexed question of outside ownership and I would ask Cathy Craigie to pursue this matter. Okay, thank you, uh, convener. Um, is there a danger in, in this uh, legislation that out, outside ownership uh, may lead to law firms offering only profitable uh, legal services to the exclusion of, of less profitable work? There are two separate questions in, in that. As far as the question of external ownership is concerned, um, there is provision for a transparency of external ownership in this legislation that in an odd sort of way doesn't really exist in the traditional model. There is, there, there is an element of if a solicitor sets up in business under the traditional model and, and, and trades within the law society rules, there is no scope for an investigation as to where the money came from to, to, to set up that business in the first place. And, and it, it's, it's very regrettable, but it is undoubtedly the case that from time to time you do get a situation where a solicitor finds themselves unduly indebted to an unsavoury client. And, and, and within the, the, the current model, we had the example within the last 18 months or so of a solicitor who provided a false alibi for somebody on a robbery in circumstances where they had become unduly indebted to this client. And that's, that's the current model. So, so, so actually, this legislation provides for greater transparency in terms of the visibility of who the external investor in a business is. And in sections 50 and 51, there is, there is um, provision there for a fitness to own test being applied by a, a regulator to that model. So, so we don't have a concern about that. The, the, the wider question that you ask about profitable legal services, the, the, 
there, there undoubtedly has been an element traditionally of the high street firm regarding, to, to, regarding itself as having some kind of public service duty to say that you provide overall profit, profitable services, or you're not in business at all, but there is some kind of public um, obligation on you to, uh, to provide assistance in unprofitable areas in the public um, interest. We, um, we are conscious, however, that even within the traditional model, um, that's, that's something that, that unfortunately is, is going the way people are choosing, even in the, under the current scheme, to cherry pick, particularly when financial times are hard. You have to concentrate more on the work that's, that's definitely making you um, a profit. There are quite separate access to justice issues that are lurking behind all of this that hopefully we'll get the opportunity to come on and, 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 and talk about. But we do not think in itself ABS is, is, is the issue here. The, the, the issue is a change in the way in which the legal services market is, is, is operating, unfortunately. But there's a concern there, uh, uh, there that, that, that we're picking up in the, um, the written uh, evidence that we've had so far that, you know, bringing and introducing the Tesco order, you know, that was the what was tripping off everybody's tongues a few years ago when we were talking about that. It would be like the, the Tesco law. Um, but, you know, large organisations like that might come in and, and mop up all the profitable uh, work. Um, that would then result in, you know, smaller high street firms who are more than just solicitors there making, uh, uh, wanting to make a profit. They provide a lot of support and pro bono work for um, for organisations in their local community. But if they're not getting the profit out of that local community, they're going somewhere else to to get online legal services or uh, to get cheaper legal uh, services. That threatens. Um, the, the smaller high street uh, solicitor. I, I agree with that um, as a principal statement. I think that, that, that maybe where people are being unrealistic is the extent to which that, has alre that is already happening in, in the legal services market, that, 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 that high street firms are under <laughs> pressure from people who have commoditised certain elements of it. Domestic conveyancing um, is, is the most obvious um, example, but you could argue that summary criminal work is also increasingly being commoditised and concentrated in, 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 in a few hands, which is also actually quite profitable um, work. Um, that almost is, is, is a separate issue from the issue that, 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 that we're dealing with in this um, legislation. Our big worry, um, I make no bones about this, when this all started, wasn't so much the supermarket centre in the market. Our, our worry was at that time that the banks would enter the market and, and effectively when you got a mortgage from RBS or HBOS or Lloyds TSB or whoever, that they would effectively package all this up and provide you with a lawyer as well from a central call centre. The, the, the one and only bright spot, if you like, about the collapse of bank regulation is that we think there is now no prospect that their regulator would allow effectively the one independent bit um, of, of, of the market um, that, 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 that still exists. So, so, so we don't think that's as much of a danger. Um, as it once was. We should also not forget that the uh, licensing or regulatory scheme in terms of Section 11 has to take account of competition issues. Uh, and if there's going to be a material disadvantage to competition in a particular area as a result of an application for a license. So an approved regulator has to have these things in mind, Mr. Craigie, um, in order to make sure that granting a license doesn't produce an imbalance. But, but, but would, would the granting of one licence in the whole of Scotland not produce an imbalance? You know, I mean, if, if access is going to be so easy for people to, to go and do their legal, um, uh, deal with their legal needs over the telephone or go into Edinburgh or go into Glasgow, I mean, one licence opens it all, it all up. And why are we going this way? When, and I suppose I'm maybe taking a wee step back here, convener, and I apologise if I am, but why are we going in this direction when, as far as the, the written evidence that we have, that there's only other, two other countries in the whole of the world who have uh, moved in this direction, and that's England and Australia? Yes. Uh, well, of course, people can get their legal advice over the telephone or the internet at the moment, um, it's, uh, and so therefore <coughs> not persuaded, really, that... Uh, the granting of a licence in the future is going to cause a rush of people leaving their traditional relationships uh, with uh, their, their firms and, and uh, seeking uh, advice from someone uh, who, is, who has obtained a licence and is 
is doing all their information over the internet. I think that, that, that the challenge of new technology and how the 